Hey everybody, Matt and himself here, and welcome back to Chain of Memories, or rather a bonus episode of Chain of Memories. And um, you might be thinking, what is there to talk about? There is no plot left. And yes, that's very true. But um, in case you haven't played this game and would like to play it yourself, I think I should give you a little bit of um, help on how this game actually works in the combat. And, for, and to do that, we have to go into the menu. And, of course, as you know, review decks. Now, as you know, this game is played with cards as your attacking commands, which is why... Um, this game is actually pretty freaking st strategic. As you can see, I have my a main deck, a magic deck, and what's called a Riku deck. I don't know why it's supposed to be named. I, I'll allow you to see that. It's supposed to be named Boss. Whoops. Boss. My boss deck. Now, um... The main deck is off, obviously, for the main adventure against uh, random enemies here and there of Heartless. And let's take a look at what I actually have in this deck. Now, obviously, you have to have as high cards and as possible. As explained in the beginning of the game, you can break other enemies' cards the higher your cards are. So, therefore, I, of course, try to have as high level cards as physically possible. Um, with the CP card points. Um, CP you get by uh, get from defeating enemies and leveling up, as you know. Um, just like health, you choose between them. But let's check it out. Um, I have these in a random order on purpose, so that I can use low and high cards um, in an attacking combo and therefore trying to stun my enemies and card break them in case they try to attack me. This will obviously result in sometimes uh, me getting card broken myself, but this strategy is fairly smart to use. And if you think about it, if you ordered all your cards um, with, in this case, it would be all sixes together, all sevens together, all eights together, and all nines together, that would result in um, you having to react with the um, uh, with the neck buttons, I would call it. The right and left uh, neck button, or whatever it's called. Uh, uh, which are the co uh, buttons to uh, move around in your deck. You'd have to react in a split second to uh, outmaneuver your enemies, so that would probably not work. Therefore, I have it like this, so that I can let random chance sometimes jump in and, and take over. Now as you noticed, um, as you may have noticed, all these are attacking cards. They are all Keyblade attacking cards. Nothing else is here. Where are they? They're down here. Here we have whatever this thing was called. I think it's just called the potion. I may be wrong, but it uh, uh, re uh, regenerates all my attacking cards. Um, it's of, it's obviously of strategic reasons after the attacking cards, so that when I'm done with using all my attacking cards, I will immediately uh, press that and immediately get my uh, all my attacking cards back, so I can start over with combos. After that, I have magic cards, which is because strategically it means that if I don't want to attack with a normal attack. I can move away from all the attacking cards, plus the potion, and then I'll immediately be at the magic. After that, we have my summon cards, and as you can see, this one is a premium. The premium cards can't be relo reloaded, which means that when you reload your deck, it will disappear. Therefore, it's a good strategic move to put it as the first card in a slide, so that, well, it will disappear anyway because that's what slides do. This is also the reason why my cloud card uh, 5 is the one in the front, because it's the lowest, so that's the one I can afford to lose without any problems. 
Then we have my Ragnarok combo here. Um, as you've seen in the Let's Play, it hasn't really been extremely useful a lot of the time, but when it worked, it did work, and I did appreciate it. I remember it as better, but whatever. Um, why this one isn't in the front, I am not sure of. It actually should be, as it's the same thing as up here, with the premium card disappear disappearing. On this, of course, it's from the logic that it's all low cards because of the combo having to be low. Um, yeah, I think that's the, that's the reason. I'll, I'll explain. Um, because this combo is made of low cards and I don't want low cards in my deck, that'll just screw me over. I want this one to be in the front and then it will disappear with the slide because I use the slide and at the same time this one will disappear because it's a premium card so it can't be reloaded so there's only this one left which I then can use for slide in a different um, uh, combination once again we have the premium card in the front here because it's a high level premium card then we have two zero cards and here's the genius part it's in the back of the deck it's the very back which means that I can just, when being in a normal combo, if my enemy then uses a slide, I can immediately jump uh, to the left twice and use a zero card. Then we have these two. These are just, um, you know, uh, the select cards that makes um, securities. I normally have... Um, healing abilities on him, like reload health and stuff like that, because that's mostly what I need in a battle. But that's my main car uh, my main deck. Obviously your deck would be different, but uh, when you're done, when you go through the game, because you will get different cards as you play along, but I'll, I will recommend using this sort of uh, sorting of your deck. It's a very strategic way of working it out, and it will grow on you very fast. You will quickly um, know exactly what to do and when to do it, which is why I made it um, like this. Now then, magic deck. My magic deck only has one purpose, and that is to um, play around with the magical, uh, the white mushrooms, so that it's only for those challenges. So it's just the magics they need, and then some uh, healing cards and, su and such. I didn't know what I needed it to, um, what's it called? I, I didn't know what I would need to fight them, or not to fight them, but to engage in, with them, or to, in them. You know, to encounter them. I didn't know what magic I would need. Therefore, I just took a little of all the different stuff. Um, so, that's why I have all this junk in here, even though I don't need it. Lastly, we have the boss deck. Now, for enemies that logically are bosses, and I can't really fend off without uh, some specific strategy, uh, strategy involved, I have this deck. And for some reason, it's sorted out wrong with the six and stuff. That's not how I play, as, as, as I stated before. That's a mistake on my part. I don't know. But as far as I understand, this is also an, an earlier save file, so... Yeah, so for some reason, it's not done. I don't know why. But it's made in the same way with the attacking cards. Uh, sort like this, then two twice reloading cards, then a hell of a lot of healing cards, because that's often the problem with bosses, they freaking kick your ass, and you'll need to heal a lot more than you would normally do in a battle, which is why I have so few in the main deck. Then I have a ton of zero cards, because they use slights all the time, and then some other... Um, uh, you know, black cards or whatever they call. But there you have it. That is my decks. Um, 
I hope that was useful and that you will be able to use it for yourself in a playthrough of this game. And if not, uh, I hope you have your own strategy. Feel free to share it. I wouldn't have anything against knowing about it. See you guys later.